God snatched you from the hands of the devil and said, get it together. Join me in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah, I'm going to get right to the word. I'm not going to keep you here too long because I am hungry. And uh, amen. And I want to go eat and I don't want to keep you here too long. And I want to go open some of the gifts that I got. I got some gifts on my desk, man. I like going to my desk and there's gifts. Um, hint, hint. In uh, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, I'm reading out of the New King James Version. If, if you have something different, just follow along with me. It is our custom to stand for the word of God. And then after that, we can sit the rest of the service. Amen. The book of Isaiah chapter 9, starting in verse 6. Let's get that scripture up there. And when you're there, say amen. If you're not there, say hold up. Hold up. The book of Isaiah. If you don't know your Bible too well, learn in the very beginning of the Bible, there's an index that tells you how to get there, what page. And then you get familiar with your sword. That's the sword. That's how you fight your battles with the word of God, the sword. Hallelujah. Amen. So here we go. The word of God reads, for unto us. Somebody say unto us. For unto us. It doesn't say to Joseph and to Mary, even though it was their child. It says unto us. That means that God is for all of us. Hallelujah. And that's a blessing because you need to get excited because it's unto us. That means that the gift is yours in the name of Jesus. Amen. So here we go. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful. Hallelujah. Not only will his name will be Wonderful, it will be called Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Oh, I'm going to say it again. Unto us. Hallelujah. There's a child that is born. Unto us there's a son that is given. And the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called. This, this is for you. The name, the gift that you're about to receive is called Wonderful. Woo, hallelujah. It is Counselor. It is Mighty God. That is your gift. It is an everlasting Father. Oh, that's a great gift. He is the Prince of Peace. That is your gift. Today, you're going to leave here with a peace that you never had before. You're going to leave here with some wisdom and understanding like never before. Today, you're going to leave here knowing that wonderful is at your dispense. Hallelujah. You're going to leave here. You came in one way, and you might say you're okay, but you're going to leave another way. Hallelujah. And you should be excited that you're going to walk out with that gift. Praise the name of Jesus. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the word that's about to come forth. I pray that you anoint my lips and let it be you speaking through me, Lord. Open up the ears of every man and woman, youth, child, everywhere where they're, they're at in their classes and even in here, that they may hear your voice. Wake them up, Father. Wake us up, Father God. Shake us like a rug. Remove what needs to be removed. Remove all distraction, tiredness, anger. Remove every single thing that is not of you, Father God. And I pray to you, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will fall fresh upon this place, that every single person in this house no matter what they came in with, no matter how they came in, that you will touch their hearts, Father God, and that they will leave here blessed by the best. I ask you these things in Jesus' name, and everyone say amen and amen. You may have a seat. Praise God. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you heard what he said. Wake up, wake up, and wake up. Amen. Um. I'm excited to be in the house of the Lord here today. I'm excited for what the Lord is going to do here today. Amen. Uh, uh, I'm really, really proud of each and every one of you that you took your time to be here today. And I want you to receive this word. That not just only sitting here, but don't look to the left or don't look to the right. Don't get distracted. Know that within this hour, this time that God has woken you up for a reason... Don't waste this hour. Don't let it be an hour of just, I don't know what he spoke about. Don't know what he meant. I want you to just sit back. I want you to picture yourself as a boxer. You're in the corner and you're in a battle. And the, the trainer, the coach, his name is Jesus. 
And he's about to tell you how to get the victory in the name of Jesus. He's about to tell you how you can lift up your hands up high and say, I am victorious in the name of Jesus. He's about to tell you how you can lift up your hands and say, I'm more than a conqueror in the name of Jesus. Is there any more than conquered individuals in this house? Or is there any victorious people in this house? Oh, I see a lot of people in this house that you've been through some good fights, but you're still standing in the name of Jesus. Praise his holy name. It's, it's, a, it's a blessing to be able to be in the house because we've been talking about preparation. We just have a few more days before we go into 2024, man. It went by so fast. I'm still having finished putting my lights up. I told my wife, what do we do with the rest of the strands there in the house? He goes, we have to take it down pretty soon. Goes, and then she, we're driving over here. He goes, now I know why people, you know, the ones that were putting Christmas lights before Thanksgiving. Now I know why. I was making fun of them. I shouldn't have. And, and uh, now I know why. This world is so fast, man. Like, before you know it, it's already New Year. It's already Christmas. It, it came, like, so, so fast. And, and we're so wrapped up with a fast world that we don't really have room or for, for Jesus. Amen. So when you're in this house, man, that means that you made some room, hallelujah, some time to come and spend with the Lord. That means that the brisket and the barbecue and the families and the presents, that means that that comes second and Jesus comes first in the name of Jesus. And that speaks volumes because that is so true that you seek in the kingdom of God first and everything else shall come to pass. And not everybody can, not everybody can do that, man. You did it. Some of you probably were forced to get here, but you made it. And it's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. And you should say thank you, Jesus, that he even woke you up this morning. Amen. That alone is a gift on his own. Amen. Here we have Jesus born in a, in a, in a barn. And it's saying, uh, unto us, how, what unto us can actually, what good can come out of an individual that is born in, in a barn, in a place where uh, nobody would even think about the king a king or a counselor or the prince of peace or the mighty everlasting God that doesn't sound like a name for someone that is in a barn born in a little box you know where the animals are born but it's a blessing to know that God had all along had it all planned out in the name of Jesus because great things come out of places where it's disordered uh, great Things and great men and women of God come out of places where uh, 7207 West Side of San Antonio and uh, what good can come, come out of Nazareth? Hallelujah! And the thing is, it's a blessing when you when you know that the King of King came from a barn and here unto us. That's my title today. Is unto us? Can somebody say unto us? Amen. Unto us a child is born, and I like that title unto us because it's for us. It's, you know, it's, you can't say, I wish my tia was here to hear this word. No. If God wanted the tia here, the tia would have been here. This is unto you, unto us. God has a gift for us. And, and God wants you to be blessed, man. He wants you to be so blessed. And he will, he will be called Wonderful Counselor. Come on, somebody say Wonderful Counselor. What a blessing to all of us who follow Christ. If you don't follow Christ, if you don't have a relationship with God, you'll probably be a little lost here today. But the good thing about it is you're, you're here today. I was once lost, but I was found. Hallelujah. I was once blind, but I can see now. And I know that my God, he doesn't care what you did last night. What he does care is that you took a step of faith into the house of the Lord. The church didn't fall. The church is not going to fall. But I know that the word of God says that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that he is the Lord. The Lord of lords, the King of kings is in this house. So I pray to the Lord Almighty that if you don't have a relationship with God, that you will leave here with a relationship with God. God knows every single person in this room. He knows you very, very well. That he brings you into the house to prepare you for what's about to happen tonight. To prepare you for what's about to happen in New Year's. We talked about we need to be prepared, ready for what's about to happen in 2024. Listen, we're not crossing over just to cross over. 
We're crossing over to make a difference in the name of Jesus. We're crossing over to see revival in the name of Jesus. If you haven't been with me, I'm crossing over with a mission, an assignment to see people rise from the dead, hallelujah, to see people rise up from the, from the wheelchairs. I, I have an assignment, and I told you that God says if you want to experience a revival, let's have a funeral first. Let yourself be dead. It's no longer you. It's others in the name of Jesus. We are about to walk into something that the devil's going to tremble in the name of Jesus. You're about to walk into 20. Look, the devil's so scared of you because you stepped in here today. Every step you take, the devil's like asking, why and how are they still moving? Why in, in the world are they still showing up? Because some of you shouldn't be showing up. Some of you shouldn't be here on Christmas Eve. But by the grace of God, hey, hallelujah, by the grace of God, here you are today. And I don't know about you, but I feel like saying hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you to the Most High. The King of Kings is in the house. He already knew that one day I would be standing here. When you thought you weren't going to make it, God says, I'll lift you up. I'll carry you, and I'll take you where you need to get to. Some of you have been carried by the Lord. I believe that all of us have been carried by the Lord. The counselor, the mighty God, Omega, the Alpha, the beginning, the end. He's in this house, and I'm excited to unwrap the gift that the Lord has for me. You should get excited for that as well. Come on, praise his holy name. Hallelujah. Ah, God is so good. Christ, to know us, unto us, a wonderful counselor has been born. And we celebrate that. I celebrate this every single day of my life. Because throughout my walk with him, he has guided me. He has instructed me. He has given me knowledge. He has given me understanding. He has given me wisdom because he is my... Whatever you're seeking, whatever you're lacking, you can ask him for advice. Don't ask your comadre and your brother and your sister and the curandera. Don't ask them. Look up to the hills from where your help comes from. Your help comes from the Lord Almighty, the wonderful counselor that will lead and guide you everywhere you go. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want you to understand that if you're taking notes, our wonderful counselor gives us strength. Gives us strength. That's a gift right there. So if you're sitting here, it's like, okay, I don't know the word. I don't know what he's talking about. I don't know the Bible. I don't go to church. Right there, just right there. The wonderful counselor gives you strength. That means that if you're weak, you came to the right place, man. Because a wonderful counselor is about to give you strength like never before. You might have came in with your head down, but you're going to walk out with your head lifted up high, stronger than ever. Looking at the devil and said, man, you thought you had me, but here I am. Hallelujah. Stronger than ever. Come on, somebody say, I'm stronger than ever. I'm stronger than ever. I want people that are really down right now. I want people that are depressed and sad to open up your mouth and tell the devil, I'm stronger than ever. Hallelujah. I'm stronger than ever. Even if you don't feel strong, I dare you to open up your mouth and say, I'm stronger than ever. Because when you open up your mouth, hallelujah, when the praises go up, the blessings come down, and you will leave here stronger than ever. Hallelujah. Come on, praise his holy name. Hallelujah. If you remember the man for 38 years that was paralyzed by the pool of Bethesda, if you don't know about that story, you got to read these stories, man, because those stories are like for us. And in the book of John chapter 5, verse 6 and 9, it talks about this man that was just laying there by the pool of Bethesda, paralyzed, 38 years. And every time there was a stirring of the water, their belief was that the first one that will get in the water will get healed. So for 38 years, you would think that by now you would be healed and be who God called you to be. But there's some people like that. Think about it. When was it when you got saved? I got saved when I was 36. For 36 years, I was stuck. And then you think about how old you were when you say yes to Jesus. And you think, man, that's how long I've been stuck. And, and here comes Jesus, the wonderful counselor, mighty counselor. And he gives advice. He speaks to this paralytic man and tells him, do you want to be made well? I'll ask you, all of you, do you want to be made well? 
Do you want to be healed in the name of Jesus? Like, do you want to smile again? Do you want to rejoice again? Do you want things to change in your life? Do you want 2024 to be better than 2023? Hallelujah. Then the wonderful counselor is in this house to let you know what he told the paralytic man. Then rise up, pick up your man, and walk in the name of Jesus and be made well. Hallelujah. You can't just sit there. You got to rise up and walk to your blessing, walk to your healing, walk to your deliverance, walk to your peace, walk to your joy. Somebody needs to rise up in the name of Jesus. And just you rising up, the devil's like, no, stay down. No, devil, you are a liar. I'm rising up in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I dare you, if you're down right now, I dare you to rise up in the name of Jesus. Addiction be gone. Frustration be gone. Anger be gone. Depression be gone. Suicide thoughts be gone because I'm rising up in the name of Jesus. I came too far to quit. I will no longer be down. I will no longer be backed up. I will rise up in the name of Jesus. Come on. Somebody praise his holy name here today. Hallelujah. This is a present you're not going to forget. This is a gift that you're not going to forget. And this Jesus, this wonderful counselor, he gives him advice to rise up. See, the thing is, is, it's just like the woman at the well. If you look up at the woman at the well, in John chapter 4, if you're taking notes, verse 1 to 30, this woman was in a destructive cycle of relationships. If there's anyone here in a destructive cycle of relationships, you just can't get your relationship to work. And Jesus counsels her. He counsels this woman as well, just like he did with the paralytic man. And Jesus came to both of these individuals and many, many, many more other individuals in the Bible. He came to them in their broken state. And there might be some people here that you're in a broken state of life. You're in a, you might be in a place where you're just, just out, broken, don't want to don't wanna move. I'm okay where I'm at. Leave me alone. Ain't nothing has worked for me. But Jesus... The counselor, the wonderful counselor, is such a blessing because they have been living this way for a long time. There might be some people here that you've been living like this, broken, for a long time. But the thing is, is the wonderful counselor told them what action to take. And then he gave them strength. Because in order for you to receive your blessing and your gift, you got to take action. That man would have stayed stuck there for 38 years. He would have been there 39 years. But the counselor gave him some advice. If you want to get well, you better rise up. You better get up. If you want your relationship to stop being all, all toxic and all messed up, then you need to stop because a woman had like five men and five husbands and the one she was with, it wasn't even his. And maybe there's some people here that the one you're with is not even yours. Or maybe you have one, but you have another one. And that one doesn't know that you have another one. Toxic. But God brought you here, man, and he said, man, if you want to get rid of that toxic relationship, if you want to get right with me, if you want to just be just me and you, hallelujah, if you want to be faithful in the name of Jesus, then you need to take action and do something about it and know that the counselor, wonderful counselor, is at the house, and God tells him, with me, you will never thirst again. With me, you will no longer go through those things because I am the wonderful counselor in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Unto us, unto us, a child is born, and he will be called Mighty God. Somebody say Mighty God. That's the next name I want to talk about because Mighty God is a translation of the Hebrew word. is Gabor, G-I-B-B-O-R, Gabor. And Gabor is a powerful, it, it, it means a powerful champion. Hallelujah. This is good because if we, if we have a gift that is called Mighty God, that means it's a powerful champion. That means it's a godly hero. So when we say Jesus come into my life, that means that when I say greater is he that is in me than he that is out in the world, that means that you yourself are a champion in the name of Jesus. That means if God lives in you, that means that it's unto us, unto me. I'm a godly hero in the name of Jesus. My son is preaching at the Northwest because I'm a hero, hallelujah. And it's not because of me, but with the hero, almighty God, the mighty God that lives in me. He, I have, I have to tell you, you can be a hero to many, many people because you serve a mighty God. And the mighty God is like, man, you know what? These people, you can't save anyone. 
but God can save everyone. All you got to do is be that vessel and be Christ-like and know that when people come say, what is it about you, man? How did you change? How did you go from being over here hooked on drugs to being hooked on Jesus? It's because I serve a mighty God. Hey, hey. I serve a mighty God. Hallelujah. I serve a counselor, a wonderful counselor that if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be standing here today. Hallelujah. The mighty God that I serve has given me strength in the name of Jesus. I am a champion. Somebody say, I am a champion in the name of Jesus. Yes, you are. Come on, look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, you are a champion in the name of Jesus. You're not a drunk. You're not an alcoholic. You're not a schizophrenic. You're not bipolar. You're not sick. You are a champion in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That's who you are. Come on, somebody praise his holy name. Woo! The, the devil's running like crazy. He's going... Where do I go? Well, he, he don't even know where to go. For he can go, he can go back to hell where he belongs. That's where he needs to go in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because he surely doesn't belong in here. He doesn't belong in my family. I don't know about you, but the devil has no power over my family. He don't have no power over my finances. He don't have no power over my wife, over my children. He don't have no power over my health. Because the only power that he had, that Jesus had, is on me. Unto us, the power, the strength is on us, it's for us. The devil has no power, man, no authority. You have to understand those things, because if you don't, you won't be able to survive, man. Remember, unto us, the mighty God, that we can call, we can call. The word Gabor means strong, mighty, and watch this, it refers to someone who is bold, audacious, audacious, bold. I was looking at the word audacious. This is someone, this is God. This is the gift that you're going to get. Audacious is somebody that is willing to do something surprisingly, something bold, someone that is fearless, someone to take a risk. And my God, the wonderful counselor that was born, he was audacious. He went to the cross for you and I. Eh? He took a nail in one hand and took a nail. I know we're talking about the birth of Jesus, but let me tell you what he has endured. Let me tell you how strong he is. Let me tell you about the mighty God that he is. Let me tell you about the counselor, wonderful that he is, that he will die for you and I. He lived and he died so we can live, hallelujah, and die to ourselves. That's the God that we serve. Come on, somebody praise his holy name. And because he is who he is, he gives us strength. And the thing is, is in the book of Isaiah chapter 40, and when you go to chapter 40, you can go to verse 29 and 31, and it says that he gives strength, gives strength to the weary. And not only did he give strength to those that are weary like don't don't get weary in doing good in other words you keep on doing good even when they're not doing good to you you keep on doing good even when it doesn't feel good hallelujah the bible says don't grow weary in doing good in due season somebody say in due season you will reap a harvest in the name of Jesus. And I feel like there's some people in this house that you've been enduring and enduring and fighting and fighting and the harvest is about to open up. The floodgates of heaven are about to open up and the blessings are coming, are going to overtake you. You're going to step in like Ruth into your Boaz blessings. Hallelujah. Double for your trouble. Is there anyone here that you face some troubles? Get ready for your double for your trouble blessing. Hey, get ready for your double portion of blessings coming your way. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. It's pretty good because it, it goes on to say that he gives strength to the weary and he increases, increases the power of the weak. Increases the power of the weak. You can be all skinny, all flaquito. Oh, bony. And you can be facing a big old giant. And because the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the one that is strong, potatious, this, this man that is, he doesn't fear, fearless, lives in you. 
and he gives you strength and he increases the strength. He gives you power when you're weak. So when you're down and out, some of you came to church right now because you hit rock bottom. You hit so far to the ground that the only thing you can do is look up. What a blessing because that's what you should have done a long time ago. But today is the day that the Lord has made. You should rejoice and be glad in it. Today is the day of salvation. No longer will you be down. Rise up, hallelujah, and pick up your mat and walk in the name of I hope you're getting what I'm trying to say because you kind of came here all mad and angry and sad and all fighting tired. You don't want to keep on going. And then the Lord gives you a word and he said, I will give you strength when you're weary. I will increase your power when you're weak. And those who hope on the almighty, I will renew your strength. You will soar on wings like eagles. You will soar like eagles in the name of Jesus. Ah, hallelujah. Where's all the eagles at in the name of Jesus? Mounted up high, hallelujah. That God will give you strength in the name of Jesus. You're not a chicken. You're not a turkey. You're not a crow. You don't get scared. You don't run. You stand strong. Open up your wings in the name of Jesus. Mount up high in the name of Jesus. And my God, hallelujah, will give you the strength, the power to go through storms like never before. Come on, somebody praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo! God is so good. Come on, let's give it up for the Lord. Amen. Somebody say, oh, oh, what a mighty God we serve. Yes, you do. This Christmas won't ever, ever be the same. You will leave here with a gift like no other. You will leave here with a supernatural strength. You will leave here with some wisdom in the name of Jesus. Tell your neighbor, hold on, wait. Look at your other neighbor, the one that you haven't talked to. Say, neighbor, wait. Tell them there's more. Come on, tell them there's still more. Oh, that's a word right there. That's a word right there. Some of you thought it was our, no, no. Elder Sam, wait. A ring, wait. I'm talking to them because they, they, they got a lot of stuff together here. But there's more. Ah, there's a lot more. Come on. There's more that is on its way. Your children are on their way. Your family are on the way. Your healing is on the way. Hey, there's more. There's more. There's more. Your blessing is on its way. Your strength is on its way. Your freedom is on its way. Hey, your financial breakthrough is on its way. The open doors are on the way. You haven't seen nothing yet. No eye has seen. No ear has heard. Oh, what the Lord is about to do here coming this season. Come on, somebody praise his holy name. Hallelujah. <laughs> there's more, there's more, there's more. Wow. This is good when you when you know that there's more. And, 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 and this is exciting because Isaiah goes on to say, unto us an everlasting father. Woo. Somebody say an everlasting father. Unto us an everlasting father. This means that this everlasting father will provide for you. This means that this everlasting father not only will provide, but he will protect. He will protect this everlasting father. Means that he will be a father and his fatherhood will be without an end in the name of Jesus. This is for all of you that maybe you didn't grow up with the father. The father that is talking about right here, he's been with you from the beginning. He's with you right now and he will be with you to the end of time. Hallelujah. Don't ever say you don't have a father. You have a father. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Counselor, hallelujah, mighty God. The Father that will never leave you or forsake you. The Father that will protect you. The Father that will provide for you. The Father that will speak life into your life and you'll never be the same. Oh, what a mighty gift. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Come on, praise his holy name. Hallelujah. Somebody say he is internal. 
In the book of Psalms, Psalm 72, verse 17, it says, His name shall endure forever. His name shall endure forever. That means you will never lack anything if you continue to put him first. He is eternal provider. Come on, somebody say, he is my eternal provider. I want those of you that maybe he's not providing for you at all. I want some of you that maybe you're losing some things, you're losing your mind. I want you to be bold, audacious, and say, he is the everlasting. Nah, nah, like you mean it. Or the devil's like, what? You don't even got nothing. Nah, he is the everlasting provider. I might not have nothing, but as long as I got Jesus, I got everything that I need. Come on, somebody lift up his holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whoa. This is so good. In the book of Revelations, this is good stuff, man. That's why I tell people when you come to church, bring a little tablet, Dollar Tree, pen, and take notes because it's, you can take this back with you. The book of Revelations, chapter 21, verse 6 and 7. He said to me, it is done. Somebody say, it is done. Oh, that's a word right there. It is done. I don't know what you're going through, but the Lord brought you here to tell you, it is done. In the name of Jesus, it is done. No longer will you be going through what you have been going through. No longer will the doors be shut. No longer will be no's and no's and no's. It'll be yes and yes and yes and amen and amen and amen. It is done in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody praise his holy name. It is done. You are healed. It is done. They are coming. It is done. Come on, somebody say it is done in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And he doesn't stop there in Revelation. He doesn't stop there. He says, it is done. And then he, he's bold right here. He just doesn't say, it is done. He says, it is done. I am the alpha and I am the omega. I am the beginning and I am the end. I will give. Oh, watch, watch this. This is a gift. Somebody put your hands on. Get this gift. Okay, this is a gift. I am the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. I will give you of the fountain of water of life freely to those who thirst. He who overcomes, are any overcomers in this house? He who overcomes, watch this, keep your hands up. He who overcomes shall inherit all things in the name of Jesus. And I will be his God and he shall be my son. Wow, my God says if you put your hands out, I will give you everything you need in the name of Jesus. It is done because I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You don't even know what's going to happen in 2024. But because he knows the end from the beginning, he has a plan for you. He has a blessing for you. He has an open door for you. All you got to do is stay strong. Overcome every single obstacle that comes your way. Be an overcomer and know that it is done. Come on, somebody praise his name. Hallelujah. Is there any thirsty people in the house here today? Because he will give you from the fountains of the water of life. And that's where people need to be thirsty for him. Where you say, man, I just can't get enough. People that come not only on Sundays, but they're here on Wednesday, their Bible says, like, you're thirsty, you're hungry. People like that, they don't come just because it's a holiday. They come because they know that God has set them free in the name of Jesus. They come because they know that they need Jesus every day of their life, every second. You wake up and you say, thank you, Jesus. All hell's breaking loose and you say, thank you, Jesus. When nothing's working out, you say, thank you, Jesus. I'm looking for some radical, thirsty, hungry people in the house that you know, that you know, that you know, that there's no way you're going to go back. 
people that know that you might not be like where you're at right now, but when you look back, you thank God that you're not where you used to be because it is done in the name of Jesus. That old lifestyle, it is done in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Ready to receive this gift of the fountain of the water of life. See, drinking is an action. But an action of receiving like faith. I'm going to say it again. Drinking is an action. We're not talking about alcohol, guys. That's not an action. That's a bad action. But I want you to remember this. Because tonight, you're going to get tempted. Things will come against you. I've been talking about that for the whole month. Just to prepare you. So when it does happen, you remember, drinking is an action. Drinking is an action. But an action of receiving like faith. And maybe you're dealing with some insecurities. Maybe you're dealing with some things. The Bible describes insecurity as a soul thirst. Somebody say soul thirst. One that we try to quench with others' approval. Tonight, don't worry about pleasing people. You don't need to prove anything to them. When they say, who do you think you are? I'm a son of the most high. I'm a son of the mighty, mighty God. His name is Wonderful Counselor. And he's been too wonderful to me to take this sip. I don't need no sip. I don't need no alcohol. I'm already drunk in the Holy Ghost. Hey, I'm already drunk in the Holy Spirit. I'm high as a kite. I serve a God that I can't get no higher than that. I'm already, my quench has been, my thirst has been quenched in the name of Jesus. I'm satisfied in the name of Jesus. Can you imagine talking at that at the party tonight? Ooh. They're not gonna, they're not gonna wait to see you leave that party. Because once you're saved, you know how you don't stay at parties too, too long? And then they think that you're all, it's not that, it's just that, you know, you're different, you're set apart, you're sanctified. And when you're sanctified, the light and the darkness has nothing to do with it. And the thing is, it's not that your family, your friends, or anyone, they're devils or nothing, it's the principalities. Because I was once in the darkness before, and I didn't care what people did or who they came, and when they will come to my house, they will kill my high. And I didn't want the church people in my house. Now I'm one of those church people in the name of Jesus, and I show up with my head lifted up high, knowing that I serve a mighty God, hallelujah, because I've been set free. I was once lost, hallelujah, I was once blind, but the scales like a fish begin to fall off my eyes, and now I see clearly now. What I didn't see before, I can see now. The only way to start seeing clearly is by receiving this word and learning. See, a wise man likes to take correction. A wise man wants to take the word. Because I was one of those individuals that will sit where you're sitting. And I will love God. But I will still smoke cigarettes and drink a couple of beers. Not as much because now I'm saved. Oh, the about seek it. Oh, shit. But I will still drink and I will still smoke. But I love God. But I don't understand because nobody will teach me. I didn't have a pastor that was preached these words. The thing is, you should thank God, not get offended, but thank God. Say, man, tell me how it is. And I was that one. That was that individual that when I went to a church that preached the truth and nothing but the truth. I went home and said, God, that's why things are not working. I love you and I'm doing outreach and everything, but I'm still drinking, I'm still cussing. I'm no different than anybody else. And God said, man, sanctify yourself. I, I set you free. When you said yes to me, the old has gone. The new has risen. You are a new creation. You're no longer who you used to be. You have been set apart. You can't be like everybody else. You got to be set apart. Let them talk about you. If they talked about me, they're going to talk about you. Don't worry what they say. You're not here to satisfy him, her her you're here to satisfy me God say the one that woke you up this morning the one that will never leave you your wonderful counselor the mighty God that's who you need to satisfy hallelujah and some people will take will run from this direction just actually feeling uh, satisfied through pills or or drugs or or something that pornography or adultery or or things that are, that are satisfy you for only a moment. But I'm here to tell you that unto us an everlasting father is born. And we no longer have to thirst ever again. The book of Psalms chapter 91, Psalms 91 verse 16 says, 
I will satisfy him with long life and show him my salvation. When you go to Revelations that we just read earlier, it goes on to say, he who overcomes shall inherit all things. This means to conquer and to all the children, all the men and women that are in this house, I'm about to be done. Unto us, this amazing gift is available to us today. But again, our counselor gives us counsel on how to receive the gift that I'm talking about here today. We must take action. We need to read. We need to hear. We need to heed. That means obey the word of our Father. Because earlier I said, anoint my lips and let it be you speaking through me. And some of you might be sitting here and saying, man, it seems like he's talking about me. But it's not that. It's that God knows you so well that he wakes you up and he brings you here because he doesn't want you to go to hell. He wants you to go to heaven. He wants me to remind you, don't let your hearts be troubled. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not tell you. He brought me here to tell you that he goes and prepares a mansion for you. And when he does, he's going to come back and take you to be where he's at. I don't know about you, but I can't wait to get to heaven. I can't wait to enter my... My mansion is big. My mansion has made streets made out of gold, and so does yours. In my mansion, in your mansion, there's no more pain. There's no more tears, no more suffering. There's nothing. All you're going to be doing is saying, hallelujah, holy, 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 praise in the name of Jesus. Come on, praise his holy name. Come on, hallelujah. I'm done with this. What's the last one? The way to overcome and win. The way to overcome and win at life is to be a faithful witness. A faithful witness overcoming the fear of loss, of rejection, or even death. In other words, death to yourself. That you no longer live for yourself, but you live for God. And when you can be that faithful witness, when people see you, they don't see you. They see Christ in you. See, when you go to your families and you're drinking with them and you're doing it and cussing, they, you're just one of them. But when you're set apart, then you're unto us. You're one of him. And don't be ashamed. Be bold, audacious, fearless. You walk in there with your head lifted up high. <clears throat> you're full of love and compassion and and, you, and, and humble in the name of Jesus. But you got to be a faithful witness. When people see you, they should see Christ in you. Overcoming the fear. When you go back to when we first started, in the book of Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, it says, unto us. The last one, it says, Prince of Peace was born. The Prince of Peace was born. Let's go back to the scripture, please, if you can put it up there. I thank God every day, every day, for being that prince of peace. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulders. In other words, he's a ruler of all. And his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. And the final gift that he's given us is unto us we have the Prince of Peace. And the Prince of Peace is a blessing because he's the only one who can bring true peace. The only one that can bring true peace. Restoration. Somebody say restoration. Redemption. Somebody say redemption. And reconciliation. Somebody say reconciliation in the name of Jesus. Between you and God and others, the Prince of Peace, because he restores everything. He is a restorer of it all. He restores relationships. He provides a well-ordered and balanced life. This is a gift. This is your gift. And he offers the assurance of eternal life. I'm going to tell you again, some of you are not getting this. This is a gift that you're going to take home with you. The gift that you're going to take home with you is that the Prince of Peace, he restores every broken relationship. Some of you should get excited right there. He 
is going to provide a well-ordered and balanced life. If you're in here and you're living in chaos in your house, in your life, and it's all, all disordered, the gift that you're about to take if you receive it is a well-ordered, balanced life in the name of Jesus. And the greatest gift that you can receive is that he offers assurance of eternal life. That's the greatest gift that you can receive. Even though it's Christmas and even though it's, it's a time to open gifts, there are many people that are filled with all kinds of storms in your life right now. Many are just out of control. Many people are just confused, struggling. They're just, can't stay calm. They're just all over the place. You're like a wave tossed back and forth. If it's not one thing, it's another thing, it's another thing, it's another thing. Like your Christmas, it's not gonna be a joyful Christmas. Some of you are sitting here like that. But God brought you here to let you know that, man, your Christmas is about to rock your world. Your Christmas is about to change the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I'll leave you with this. In the book of Mark, chapter 4, starting in 30, 35, 38, when you look at the book of Mark, chapter 4, a lot of people are in this. It's a story about the disciples that are in a storm. And even though it's Christmas or holidays because the devil doesn't care, terrified, afraid, full of fear, the waves up high, the boat tossed back and forth, the wind, and Jesus, somebody say Jesus. Jesus gets up, hallelujah. The wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father gets up in the name, <laughs> gets up in the name of Jesus. Um, he rebukes the waves in the name of Jesus. He quiets the waves and he tells the waves, be still. And the wind died down, the storm stopped because of the Prince of Peace that's unto us. The Prince of Peace is your gift that when you're going through all kinds of hell, all you got to do is call on the Prince of Peace. Call on the Prince of Peace, the one that, the only one that can give you true peace, and he will come to your rescue. He will put you behind him, and he will tell the devil, shut up, be quiet, peace in the name of Jesus, and you can relax, you can rejoice, you can put your hands behind you and say, I'm too blessed to be stressed. I'm too anointed to be disappointed. I am a child of the Most High. I'm a child of wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father. I'm a child of the Prince of Peace. Come on, somebody praise his holy name. Hallelujah. Come on, every hand lifted up. If there's someone in this house that you say, you know what, Pastor? This Christmas wasn't looking too good, but it's looking amazing right now. I might not have all the gifts. I might not have all the family. Maybe you lost a loved one. Your Christmas is not the same. But the Lord, your Father, the everlasting God, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, he brought you here to give you this peace that only he can give you. Because no one will understand you, even if you tell them. Only God Almighty will understand you. The wonderful counselor is in this house. The time to take action is now. If you thirst, if you're hungry, and you want to be satisfied with the living water, the fountain of water, today is your day where you surrender your life to Jesus. Where you say, you know what, Pastor? Man. I don't know how I'm going to do it tonight. I don't know how I'm going to do it New Year's because the temptation is there. But if I could just have his peace, his strength to be able to stand for Jesus, to be able to have the boldness like him, to be able to say no, to be able to be who I was called to be. If that's you and you know that you're weak and you need his strength to be able to stand, then this prayer is for you. If your name is not written in the book of life, you don't know if you're going to go to heaven, something happens to you, this is for you. I want you to say the prayer with all your heart. I guarantee you, you'll feel something from the way in the back to the front. Your life will never be the same. Maybe you left the presence of God and God brought you back here today. Not just because it's Christmas, because he knows you. He knows you so well, but the devil knows you so well that he doesn't want to let you lose. 
but you got to be bold, audacious at God, and tell them, hey, you know what? I'm no longer going to be like that. I'm no longer going to live like that. I got a family. I'm a man. I'm a woman of God. I know who I am. I know who I serve. And devil, today you're about to get a black eye. Come on, somebody in this house, even if it's one person, even if it's one person, come on, lift up your hands and say, Lord Jesus. Come on, let's be bold. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me for all my sins. You died on that cross for me. You sacrificed your son to die for me so I can sacrifice too. If you can do it and you're my father, then I can do it because I'm your son. But I know that you rose from the dead on the third day. So I serve a living God. And so I ask you that you come into my life. Come on, I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. And Jesus, I want my name written on the book of life. Unto me, salvation has come. I let go of everything and I hold on to your hand tight. Give me strength, Father. I can't do this by my own. I love you. I thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. And everyone say amen and amen. Come on, somebody turn around, give somebody a high five.